Chapter 2 The Collateral Damage of American Censorship Desperate Messages Lives Broken Brianne Dressen Vaccine Injured and Co-Founder of Advocacy Group React 19 Brianne Dressen was a previously healthy mother of two and a preschool teacher. Her life took a dramatic turn after her own injury in the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine clinical trial. Determined to change her negative reaction into positive action, she co-founded react19.org, a patient advocacy organisation currently consisting of over 30,000 members. It was created by the COVID vaccine injured for the COVID vaccine injured. The following chapter is being read by the author, Brianne Dressen. Sorry if this is too forward. Not sure if you can point me in the right direction. I have lost my hunger fullness cues since the V in October, among other adverse reactions. I'm scared that they keep pegging me as depressed and trying to give me high-powered antidepressants like ketamine. Husband and I are not speaking anymore because of how sick I am. He thinks it's depression and I won't take the meds. I can't find a doctor to help or even talk to me without thinking it's anxiety or depression. I don't want to live like this. Do you have any ideas? I'm so scared because I have to force myself to eat. I don't feel emotions anymore, so I can't connect with my family. I have serious brain fog and concentration issues. All of my relationships are gone with my kids, my hubby, and my friends. I just sit and search on my phone trying to find answers. A miracle, if you will, so that something will get better. I'm basically disabled because my brain doesn't function. I can't work out because of my heart rate and not eating enough. It's heartbreaking. I have no life anymore. I am scared of the future. I need to heal for my family and for my future. I can't see living like this for 40 more years. January of 2022. Another desperate message. This time from Trish, who was just experiencing just what I had after my COVID vaccine in November 2020. The need for some sort of relief. The fear of the unknown, the abandonment, her cries for help were all too familiar. As I was young and healthy, the why for me was to protect those around me, to do my part to help us get out of the pandemic faster. My new source, NPR, was telling me this was the way back to normal life, that the vaccines were the only way. Being a lifetime vaccine taker with no issues, the call to roll up my sleeve to be part of the solution was never something I had questioned. I didn't know there were other options. I didn't understand the importance of natural immunity or alternative therapies. The media, the government, and the drug companies ensured that I didn't know about these other very important pieces of information in the COVID debate. My days of working with my preschool class, taking my small children on little nature hikes, are now replaced with progressive neuropathy, severe food intolerances, limb weakness, and more than 20 other symptoms. My life now revolves entirely around my physical condition, which is best described by my fellow injured as worse than death. As a member of the clinical trial for AstraZeneca, I reached out to the drug company for help only to be met with silence. No help not even a phone call. After the clinical trial report was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, we noticed several inconsistencies. AstraZeneca states that they followed all adverse events for 730 days. The last I heard from them was on day 60. That is well over two years of critical safety data gone. AstraZeneca also states that the individuals who didn't get a second dose chose to forego getting the second dose. AstraZeneca instructed the test clinic that I not get the second dose. Perplexed by these issues, 
I reached out to the New England Journal of Medicine and requested a revision, a rapid response, or an investigation. Dr. Eric Rubin, editor-in-chief at the New England Journal of Medicine, and also on the FDA's COVID Vaccine Advisory Committee, replied to let me know that my case would have little to no effect, as I was just one in a study with tens of thousands. This was just the first of many issues that I saw that now can be defined as... To listen to the remainder of this essay and the 33 other essays, please visit Audible, Apple Books, or Amazon to receive your copy in print, ebook, or audio. Thank you.